The October 7th terrorist attack in Israel has truly melted people's brains. I'm not yet prepared to do a deep dive video on that whole thing, and you know me, there's a decent chance it'll be old news by the time I'm done. But I would like to quickly talk about one funny quirk that has come out of the whole thing. This man is John Fetterman. He represents something very different to you if you're on the American left or the American right. If right, he's a sign in a long list of signs showing that American democracy has failed that the American people are either so stupid or so ideological that they would elect a brain-damaged retard just as long as there is a D beside his name. But if you're on the left, this conversation becomes a lot weirder. Let's go back to the beginning. John Fetterman described his upbringing as privileged. He was born when his parents were both 19, but his dad made a good living working in insurance. His dad was a conservative entrepreneurial type, and Fetterman's life plan was to take over his dad's startup after school. However, while getting a Master's of Business Administration from the University of Connecticut in 1993, Fetterman's best friend died in a car accident. As a result, he felt compelled to join the charity group Big Brothers Big Sisters of America, where adults mentor young people who don't have adult role models in their lives. He was paired with an eight-year-old boy whose father died of AIDS and whose mother was on the way out. It was Fetterman's experience working at the charity that ultimately caused his politics to drift away from the rugged individualism of his parents. In his own words, he became preoccupied with the concept of the random lottery of birth. Fetterman continued his charity work until 2005, when he ran for the mayor of Braddock, Pennsylvania. He had moved to Braddock to start a charity in 2001, helping underprivileged youth finish their schooling. He won the mayoral race by just one vote. In 2009's election for the same position, he faced Jamie Cox, who accused Fetterman of simply bulldozing his opposition and failing to build consensus with the city council. In response, Fetterman released local police records showing that Cox had been arrested in 2004. These records weren't public, and Fetterman abusing his mayoral authority to release them constituted a violation of Pennsylvania's Criminal History Record Information Act. Nonetheless, it was enough to tar Cox's image, and Fetterman won the 2009 election. His popularity only grew after this incident, and he ran unopposed in 2013 and 2017. It was during his tenure as the mayor of Braddock that Fetterman became a Democrat rising star. The town only had 2,000 residents, one major employer in the local hospital, and the mayor job only paid $150 a month. This was a small pond all in all, but Fetterman turned the town into his own personal fix-up project, with both good and bad results. He used his authority to purchase neglected buildings and fix them up on his dime. He bought an abandoned church and lived in it himself for several months while renovating it into a community center. He turned vacant lots into parks, public gardens, and in one case, the town's first public basketball court. There were no murders in the town for five straight years under his watch. Before, Braddock had an abnormally high murder rate for its size. But it wasn't all sunshine and roses. Fetterman found the city council's perpetual gridlock annoying, so he bypassed them by rooting all of his initiatives through his charities. His father foot the bill for some initial plans, and he used his charity connections to acquire funding for a lot of these projects. This limited democratic input from the residents of the town, and among Fetterman's opponents, there was a feeling that he was bypassing the city council and unilaterally implementing his plans because he knew he didn't have the political support to do it above board. Nonetheless, Fetterman had become known in the Democratic Party for his Braddock success, and it was time for him to advance his career. In 2018, he ran for the Democratic nomination for the Lieutenant Governor of Pennsylvania. The Democratic incumbent, Mike Stack, was being investigated at the time for abusing his staff and mistreating Pennsylvania state troopers, and Pennsylvania Democrats wanted to be rid of the Stack scandal. With several high-profile endorsements, most notably Bernie Sanders, he won the Democratic nomination, and the Wolf-Fetterman ticket beat out the Republicans for the governor of Pennsylvania. As lieutenant governor, Fetterman kept what the Associated Press called a light work schedule. They looked into his official work calendar and discovered that from his inauguration in January 2019 until May of 2022, his official schedule was blank for one-third of all eligible work days. The days that he did work, he tended to only work on average for four to five hours. In 2020, he presided over only half of the Pennsylvania State Senate sessions, an official duty of Lieutenant Governor. In 2021, he was there for only a third of the sessions. Lieutenant Governor also oversees the State Parole Board. The Philadelphia Inquirer reported that Fetterman ran the board with the heart of an activist and at times the force of a bully. Pardons for criminals serving jail time in Pennsylvania increased under his watch. The most high-profile event in this regard was when Fetterman implemented a one-time widespread pardoning project for people who had committed minor, non-violent marijuana-related offenses. 
John Fetterman first received nationwide recognition during the 2020 presidential election. Fetterman declared that Donald Trump was just an internet troll, and in response to Trump threatening to sue Pennsylvania for voter fraud, he said that Trump can sue a ham sandwich. Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick offered a reward of $1 million for anybody who could prove a case of fraud in the states that Trump had filed lawsuits. Investigations in Pennsylvania uncovered three fraudulent votes. Trump needed another 81,000 to win, by the way. And all three of these fraudulent votes were actually cast for Trump. Two men had voted in the name of their recently deceased mothers, and a third had voted in the name of his son, all for Trump. Fetterman joked online that Pennsylvania deserved $3 million from Texas, as they had indeed discovered three cases of voter fraud. This event gave Fetterman a national spotlight. He had unsuccessfully run for the Democratic nomination of the U.S. Senate before in 2016, but in 2022 he was high profile enough to win. It was an uphill climb though. Fetterman was popular with regular people, but he had few friends in politics. He ran the lieutenant governor's office the same way he ran the Braddock mayor's office, doing things his way with his people, preferring to reroute around official impediments to his plans rather than negotiate with them. Subsequently, despite his popularity on the ground, he had very few official endorsements from other Democrat Party members. One Pennsylvania House representative was quoted as saying that Fetterman never came and introduced himself to me or any of my colleagues. If a lieutenant governor doesn't take the time to get to talk to somebody like me, then why would we want to send somebody like him to D.C.? Nevertheless, Fetterman won the Democratic primary in a landslide, taking 58% of the vote. The next closest challenger had only 26%. However, Fetterman's wife gave his victory speech, because he was hospitalized. He had a stroke a few days earlier. Back in 2017, he was diagnosed with arterial fibrillation, an irregular heart rhythm, and a decreased heart pump. Basically, his heart wasn't consistently pumping on rhythm, and his blood wasn't circulating everywhere it needed to go. Fetterman chose to ignore the diagnosis and took none of his medication, did none of the exercises, and refused to go to the doctors for five years. The problem caused his stroke in May of 2022, and left him with an auditory processing disorder. His brain can't interpret what he hears consistently anymore. Since then, Fetterman's doctor claims that he's been attending speech therapy, he's been working out and taking all of his meds, and that the stroke hasn't left him mentally impaired, he just has disabled hearing. The 2022 Senate election was pretty brutal. This is likely what most of you remember about John Fetterman. He faced off against the celebrity TV star turned Republican nominee, Dr. Oz. It was a bloody race. Fetterman's campaign latched onto the narrative that Dr. Oz was a carpetbagger, someone who moved to a different location in order to capitalize on a vacant political seat rather than actually having any ties to that location. Dr. Oz was from New Jersey, not Pennsylvania, and Fetterman went around recording videos with Jersey Shore celebrities to troll Dr. Oz. His campaign also focused on Dr. Oz's tenure as a medical advisor to the Trump administration. The whole hydroxychloroquine thing for COVID was initially pushed by Dr. Oz on dozens of TV appearances, influencing Trump's decision to take it. Dr. Oz owned $630,000 worth of stock in companies that manufactured the drug. Meanwhile, Dr. Oz's campaign went for just as many low blows. They publicized an incident from 2013 where Fetterman, back in the Braddock mayor job, heard a sound he thought was gunfire and followed an unarmed black jogger whom he detained with his shotgun. The jogger was innocent. He thought the gunfire was kids playing with fireworks. No charges were filed against either party in the end, but the incident was uncovered to try and paint Fetterman as a racist. Fetterman stated that this event happened right after the Sandy Hook school shooting, that the jogger was near the city school, and that he was afraid of a copycat crime. Dr. Oz's campaign also latched onto the narrative that Fetterman's stroke had not only left him with a hearing impediment, but also had rendered him mentally disabled. Fetterman took four months to appear in public again, finally showing up at a rally in August of 2022. Politico reported that he appeared physically healthy and mostly talked without issue, but his speech was halted. In October of 2022, Fetterman gave his first interview since the stroke. He required real-time closed captioning technology to be able to read the reporter's questions. And before the interview, the reporter mused that she didn't know if he could understand her at all. Eventually, Fetterman and Dr. Oz debated on October 25th. Fetterman struggled during the debate. His speech was once again halting. He was missing words. He was pausing at awkward spots and sentences. It was a wreck. After this event, the mainstream Republican establishment pounced on the narrative that Fetterman was not fit for office, that it wasn't just speech or hearing impairment, it was mental impairment. This narrative still persists to this day. Right-leaning Americans basically believe that Fetterman is a vegetable whose only purpose is to be a warm Democrat body in the office, and that his staff are the ones doing most of the work. This plays into a larger narrative about Democrats, that even if their candidates and officers have one foot in the grave, like Biden or Pelosi, who cares? All that matters is that it's a D in the position instead of an R. 
common Republican criticism about the whole affair is that the Democrats will take corpses, they'll take retards, they'll take whoever they can as long as they win. And sometimes that it's just obvious American votes have to be rigged, because who in their right mind would vote for a corpse or a retard? Fetterman's poor, but frankly expected debate performance actually allowed Dr. Oz to push ahead slightly in the polls for the first time. But despite this, Fetterman still ultimately won the election, with 51.3% of the vote. Rightoids shrieked that it was all rigged, or that Americans were retarded enough to have voted for a retard themselves. Leftoids declared that Fetterman was perfectly capable of being a senator, that doctors had cleared him for the job, and that the right-wing response towards Fetterman was simply ableist bigotry. And ultimately, the leftoids were correct on this topic. There's no evidence of voter fraud in this election. There's no evidence of actual cognitive impairment. Considering Fetterman's history, especially compared to Dr. Oz's, it shouldn't be surprising that he won, disabled or not. Look at it this way. Dr. Oz is a TV celebrity turned politician, and I think the American appetite for that sort of thing is beginning to run out, especially after Trump. The hydroxychloroquine thing became a huge meme. Being the source of that laughing stock isn't a good thing. Meanwhile, Fetterman's record, for better or worse, actually speaks to him being an outsider. He looks and carries himself like a working class guy. He has a decent track record working in charity. He speaks from the heart, he shoots from the hip, he embraces memes. He's not really a politician. But not being a politician is a double edged sword. He's an ideologue, and he's not above subverting the process or bypassing the system if he's not getting his way. His go-it-alone attitude means that he's not as corrupted by outside influence, but it also means that he has few friends and little experience at negotiating. There are strengths to the Fetterman approach, and they make him appealing to your average voter, but there are weaknesses too, and they can't be ignored. Moreover, now that Fetterman's moved on from Braddock, it's hard to view his stay there as anything more than a stepping stone in his career. In Fetterman's absence, Braddock has basically collapsed. None of his initiatives produced lasting improvements. The community gardens were all run by Fetterman's charity connections, and when he left, they left, causing them to fall into decay. The businesses he brought to town with his outside people, most notably a celebrity chef restaurant, also left with him. And while the previous statistic about Braddock's murder rate was accurate, that's not the whole story. Robberies, assaults, and burglaries actually rose during Fetterman's term as mayor, despite a rapidly declining population. After Fetterman's election, the buzz around him began to quiet down. He had a second medical problem back in February, which doctors say is unrelated to the stroke, but which right-wingers claim is just more proof that he's not all there. He is occasionally insulted by the right and lauded by the left for his lack of decorum, showing up to official functions in a hoodie and shorts. To be fair, he really is that working-class type of guy. Look at him wearing a suit getting sworn in as lieutenant governor. It just doesn't look right, does it? Fetterman is definitely this lower class dude, and I'm not saying that as an insult, he just fits the aesthetic. The slow decline of John Fetterman, however, has nothing to do with his health, or his election, or any of the things that right-wingers remember him for. In fact, it has to do with the left, with a delicious bit of irony that I'd like to now present to you. We all know that the left purity spirals, it eats its own, and John Fetterman, the once rising star of the Democratic Party, is now the latest victim of the leftist Ouroboros. After that October 7th Hamas attack, Fetterman came out in support of Israel, and he immediately lost all of that grassroots support from the rank-and-file American left. You know, his only real power base, since he doesn't play the political game nearly as often as other politicians. People who once cheered on his lack of decorum, him wearing hoodies to the Senate while rightoids raging on, they were now flipping on him, saying how awful he looked, or saying he didn't get that anti-establishment cred anymore if he was going to side with Israel. People who once called the rightoids bigoted for claiming his stroke left him unfit for office are now either mocking him for that stroke or claiming that the stroke is why he's pro-Israel, implying he's unfit for office. Of course, there are some right-wingers being hypocritical too, claiming his current stance is based when they were calling him a vegetable a year ago. At the very least, Fetterman himself is rolling with the punches. He told a pro-Palestine heckler at one of his events that he had a stroke recently and can't understand him, which is pretty funny. But some leftoids have even latched onto that, saying that this is proof he's not fit for office, either because he can't actually understand them, or because brushing off their comrade like that is just unacceptable. The decline of John Fetterman is not going to be about his health, or his election, or his history. It's going to be due to the fact that he took up an unpopular yet principled stance that all of his supporters disagree with, and he did it knowing it would damage the image he's cultivated. There's a decent chance that this is going to end his political career come next election. And you know what? Good for him. I know what it's like to take an unpopular yet principled stance that my supporters disagree with, and then suffer for that choice. Regardless of anything else he's done, I can respect him for sticking to his values even if they prove to be unpopular. Plus, the pro-Israel take is the correct one, suck it nerds.